Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna to be doing more of an informational video than a specific effect. And that is, we're gonna be talking about the Adobe Creative Cloud link, you might call it. Basically what this is, is I'm gonna be discussing how Adobe as itself has evolved into this series of programs instead of one specific program to do it all. So as you know, you have Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, the list goes on. And the reason they have all these programs is because each of them do really specific yet really powerful things. And a lot of people I feel though are like pigeonholed into one program and they try to accomplish everything in that one program. Like for example, I learned After Effects first and I tried to do video editing and sound design and everything within After Effects. And I actually was able to accomplish a lot of it. But the problem was is that it took me really, really, really long to do that stuff because After Effects is designed for effects and Premiere Pro is designed for editing. So what I'm gonna go over is how these programs link together and how you might go and use them in a typical video workflow. So let's get started. This is something that I think you can best learn as we just kind of go through the video and I just discuss the different elements of Adobe. So the first program we have is Adobe Premiere Pro. This is kind of the starting and the ending of your workflow. Um, you can start one program before this. I have a video on Adobe Prelude Pro. I'll throw that in the links below. That is so you can actually organize your footage better and you come in here and you'll have um, better organized stuff so that when you start editing, it'll be a lot quicker and easier. Really good if you have like a ton of footage. So this is a great you know, piece of program to, I guess, edit videos together. That's basically what it's here for. Um, they've started to go into the world of color correction, so you can start adding colors here. So that's actually where it's starting to get like, it's a new part of the Premiere Pro realm is some basic color corrections. The reason I say basic is because if you go into things like speed grade, you have so much more control than the stuff in here. But this actually gives you a pretty good control if you're not looking for, you know, some really, really strong effects. After editing color and minor effects, that's kind of where Adobe Premiere Pro stops. You can accomplish other things, but it starts to get harder and harder and harder to do, and it starts to become more time consuming. So for example, let's say we wanted to add a lower thirds animation here, um, something to say where it's at. We could try to create a title sequence um, and do it all in there, but the problem is, is we would kind of run out of creativity because all we have in the title sequence, um, if we like went new, the default still, Okay, all we have is like a rectangle tool and some like pin tools, and that's kind of it in here. So we can create a basic square, um, but we can't really go that much more in depth in it. We can't make it that beautiful animated transition that we might want. So what we could do instead is we could actually go into After Effects and design something like that. That would be where it would be best accomplished. And there's a couple of ways to kind of jump into that program. This is where a jump to another program would be very beneficial. After you have the final edit completed, you want to add an effect, then we could go into After Effects to start accomplishing some of the effects we want to add. So we could take this clip, we could render it out, send it all to After Effects, add it where we want, and then bring it back. But that's two renders, and you would probably lose quality, it's a lot more time consuming, it's just not the, the best way, it's not how you used to have to do it. But now Adobe has gotten smart, and you can actually link to After Effects right here. So if you right click on it, you can see, so just click on the clip you wanna add it to. Right click and you can actually hit replace with After Effects composition. If you click on that and you have After Effects open, it's gonna want you to name it something. So let's just name it tutorial, sure. And you'll see that it imports that exact clip right into After Effects. Where I cut it and everything is comes into After Effects perfectly. And now whatever I do to this will go directly back into Adobe Premiere Pro. So I can add, you know, really, really fun effects to this and then bring it back to Premiere Pro and I don't even have to touch anything in Premiere. It's just going to do all the work for me. And then when I render this out, so when I, you know, finally get the video, it's going to come into After Effects and it's going to render that for me and put it in. So I don't have to, you know, manage if I had like, you know, 45 effects, 45 different files um, to render out while doing this. Really, really neat tool. And you can actually, so if we actually, you know, right click on this one and click replace with After Effects composition, it'll keep putting different compositions in After Effects. So we can only have one After Effects file to have like our entire video and just edit different, um, different compositions. 
So then, another thing. So we want to do that lower thirds animation. So we've branched out of Adobe Premiere Pro, and now we are in After Effects. But what what's the best way to accomplish like a, a lower thirds transition? We could create the stuff in here, but again, that's the creation of assets sometimes does not fall into the realm of Adobe After Effects. That's where you want either Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Premiere Pro. Not Premiere, sorry. Adobe Illustrator. And that's just because these two are for creating... Um, sort of pixel-based and then vector-based images. So let me just show you what I mean by this. We could go into this, the rectangle tool and we could try to create a rectangle, but we need, actually need to not select this so we have a shape layer going. So actually we'll just go file, new, layer, new, and like a shape layer. And then we could kind of like draw something in the bottom and we could kind of work through this. We could get something going. But in Adobe Photoshop, I've already designed one. So if we go into Import File, and we go into Desktop, we can import a Photoshop file directly into After Effects. And you'll see that it actually imports the entirety of the file right here. And then when we drop it in, you'll see that we have this bar. It's a little cheesy, but you could spend some a uh, lot of time in either Illustrator or Photoshop making this file, and it would look beautiful when you bring it in, and then you wouldn't have to do it in After Effects. And the cool thing, the really, really neat thing about doing it this way is that at the end of the day, if we wanted to change the design of this, let's say we added this to 45 different compositions. If at the end of the day, we wanted to change the design of this, since it's a direct link to Photoshop, so let me just we're at Premiere, we come into After Effects, and now it's linked to Photoshop some files. If we make a change to the Photoshop file, it will update that change to every single imported version of that file in, you know, here. So let's, let me just show you what I mean by that. So we got these two right here, but let's say we wanted to change the color. So I'm gonna go into Photoshop where this originally was. We're gonna select this rectangle we're gonna go into paint bucket. Oh, yep. We're gonna drop a new color onto it. Let's go red, bright red, so we know the change. So now it's a bright red. So I'm gonna click Control S, or just up to here to File Save. It's already right there, File Save. And then now you'll see it's already updated in After Effects. Both of them are now this. So that's kind of a really neat, um, area of the links. If you're into like programming stuff, it's like you're creating a variable. If you change, or a constant, if you change this one time, it changes it in multiple different programs at the same time. So that's very good, because if we had render this out as a .png file, or um, any other photo file, drag that in and try to replace it, like try to throw them in here, we would have no more creative stuff. And if we went back and we said, let's make it red, we'd have to render it out and we'd have to replace it in each one of these. Now we can take this and we can apply all sorts of effects to it and if we want to change the color again the effects will stay the exact same and the color will just update automatically and this links all the way back to premiere pro you'll see that now we have our red bar coming into these effects so the link keeps getting stronger and stronger and we're jumping in between different programs to accomplish the tasks that we want to accomplish this Adobe used to not really be like this. Um, it used to be a bunch of sort of separate programs, but with the invention of Creative Cloud, it's kind of all coming together. So we kind of have, let's say our effects. We've got our effects created now. We have this After Effects composition. We have this Photoshop file being imported in the After Effects composition, which is all coming back to here. But now we want to do some sound design. So again, we can edit some minor sound stuff in here. It actually has a pretty good library to do that. But if we wanna go into advanced sound design, we can actually right click on this and hit edit clip in Adobe Audition. So we have this left branch going into all the visuals and we can kinda of go into the right branch and open up Adobe Audition. And you'll see when I right click it, whoops, sure. When I right click it, it brings up Adobe Audition right here. And this is all the audio of the clip. We can do whatever we want to this. You know, raise its gain some, apply random effects to it. Sure, delay sounds great. And then all we have to do is click Control S and you'll see that it renders and replaces this with our new, um, our new file right here, which is again, really, really neat, is that now we don't have to jump into there. We don't have to render this out and somehow get it to Adobe Audition and back. We can do stuff directly in the timeline and sort of link this all together. So now in one Premiere Pro thing, uh, one Premiere Pro composition, or sequence right here. We have Adobe After Effects compositions, we have Adobe Audition stuff, we have Adobe Photoshop elements, and the list can continue. So for example, if I right click on this, um, I can actually import that file, and actually it's right here. 
So this is the same file that I used in Adobe After Effects, and it's the PSD file, my Photoshop file. But what's neat about this is that whenever I drag them into Premiere Pro itself, it actually breaks out the layers. So I can bring in a bunch of different assets into one file, bring it in here, and then use them throughout the footage. Just a different way of accomplishing the same thing, a different way to link the programs together. Overall though, uh, the tutorial's getting a little long. I just kind of wanted to talk about how Adobe links together and how you need, I think, to explore that um, if you really wanna become a strong sort of editor because if you understand all the Adobe programs and if you understand how to use all the Adobe programs, you can accomplish everything. Um, so for example, uh, just another sort of tie into programming, it's like becoming a full stack developer. You understand how to design elements in every single step of the process so that when you go into editing, you don't have to be like, oh, I need a, some guy with effects or I need to try to accomplish it all in here. You can jump to the program that would best accomplish it, bring that stuff back and then keep the flow together and make a really neat final product out of it all. Thanks everyone for joining me. This is a little bit different tutorial. Let me know if you guys like this tutorial, if you like sort of an informational basis of how Adobe uh, sort of works. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for joining me. If you wanna see more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you got any questions, comments on all this stuff, um, or if you just wanna you know, make a suggestion for a future tutorial, throw those in the comments below. And until next time guys, see ya.